Hello guys, how are you doing? I'm Sim UK. This is an interesting unboxing. We've got some brand new train simulators coming into our path in the next couple of months and I'm really excited about it. So excited, I decided to get my hand on a rail driver. Now I had to order this directly from America and they did me a nice little deal so that the uh, transportation costs weren't too extreme and uh, this is the unboxing and th first thoughts initially on it. So you can see here that the rail driver itself is very well packaged. This has been neatly designed to fit into this box and uh, a few stickers there that we're going to put on in a little bit. Now here we've got uh, an American, obviously this came from America so it doesn't have a UK plug on it, it has an American plug on it. But if you look at the other end I'm pretty sure I've got a kettle cable that will fit this. And it just goes into this uh, into this power pack here, and then that connects to the device itself. Now all this does is power the subwoofer and speakers in the device, allowing it to give you rumble feedback, which is probably something I'd like, but I'm not actually going to use, unfortunately. Now I did have a little trouble getting it out because the cabling sort of twisted itself through into the back of the uh, cardboard protective casing. But uh, a little bit of tweaking and wiggling uh, is all it takes to get it loose. No problems there whatsoever. So this thing slides out pretty easily once you've got the cables untangled and it's quite weighty. Uh, I was told it would be quite weighty, but I didn't think it would be this weighty. And in addition to the weight, it's also quite a bit smaller than I anticipated. So uh, yeah, quite interesting combination of first initial thoughts there. Each of the levers feels uh, very smooth in their action, but a little bit plasticky. I was kind of hoping that the levers would be a little bit bigger. This horn switch here is very, very loose and I'm concerned it may break. All of the buttons feel okay, but uh, some of them are a little bit spongy, I have to say. Same with the switches over here on the side. They don't really feel as crisp and as tight as some other devices that I have. Now the buttons at the front give you, uh, again, quite a, a vast array of button options, but uh, they do feel quite spongy. And the only way I can really explain how some of these buttons feel is that some of them are out of position. So some of them press in very nicely, and some of them press in at a bit of an angle, a very slight angle, but it just makes them feel different to all the other buttons. Effectively, they all work in game and there's no real problem with them, but they don't feel premium, I think is the word. And the same thing for the levers here. I mean, you can see I'm operating them with my fingertips. They do feel like a child's toy. They're very small and very plasticky and they're fairly robust and they've got quite a lot of functionality to them. But on first thoughts, it does feel delicate, I think is the right word, which is a little concerning considering the price. Still, the detents on the uh, on the direction shifter here is absolutely brilliant. This is the kind of detent I have wanted to see in my flight sim rigs for a very long time. So they haven't got it all wrong. Just this thing here, I think this is one that I might catch my hand on quite a lot and I'm worried it might snap off. I nearly bought one of these second hand and they had that piece broken and I just feel like it is the most delicate piece on the entire board. So that's something that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. So I need to put stickers onto all of the buttons and switches and stuff just to finish the design off. And uh, we're going to go right ahead and jump into that. And then I'll stick it on to Train Sim World and uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it feels first time out.
So inside of the pamphlet, inside of the manual, the paper pullout, there, are, there is a description for where each of these stickers go. Really easy to follow, really simple to implement, no problem whatsoever. You do have to pop the switches on the right hand side off with a screwdriver. That feels a little precarious. You have to be a little bit aggressive with it. It looks pretty good with all the stickers on. I've got to say, it really does add an extra little something to it. Now, the front piece here um, is a little concerning. You, you need to be a little bit careful with it, but also a little bit rough with it. The bits that are holding this uh, plastic overlay on are not that tough, but they are tough enough to give you some resistance. Um, then basically you cut up uh, these parts here and you can add them to the stick to the buttons so that you can see what they are. Effectively, it's going to change so often it doesn't really work for me. But you can see here how well the manual is laid out. And basically these two pages cover everything, including how to connect the sound for vibration feedback. You do need to go to the website and check compatibility for the games that you're going to be playing. Sometimes there are downloads um, that you need to use, but quite a lot of the games uh, have built-in support for this device which is quite nice. Um, Train Sim World 2, having messed about with it for a while now, their implementation is only in beta, and it's pretty poor. It really is not great at all. Whether or not that's going to get better depends on Dovetail Games, to be totally honest with you. What needs to happen is that we need to have the ability to pick and bind keys and axes to what we want and have them behave the way that we want. But the way that Dovetail Games has gone about it like they always do is they dictate what everything does and you just have to rebind everything and constantly switch your buttons around according to what they dictate to you i think that approach is moronic i think it's archaic and i think they should ditch it immediately and move on with every flight simulator in the world allowing you to adjust axes set things up the way you want them set them up individually for each um configuration for each uh, locomotive that needs to be the way to go forward if i want to reverse the axes i should be allowed to do that but unfortunately the way dovetail games are doing it is just wrong and i don't know who their architectural director is but he needs or she needs to be removed or spoken to or something because these decisions are very very old this is how things were done in the 80s it doesn't work in 2021 so that's a little frustrating i am however going to go test it out in a whole bunch of other games tram sim is one i'd like to see working with this but unfortunately it doesn't so there are a lot of games that would be great for this device that possibly won't support it so uh it's difficult this is a first look review so everything that i've said so far is just instinctive knee-jerk reaction but uh, I will be looking in more detail and coming back with a full review soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now. Handbrake's released. Why are we not going? What am I doing wrong here? Okay, I'll put that down for experience. The lack thereof.